I'm sort of a religious person myself, and I like to study cross-cultural things, cross-cultural religions and traditions. This past summer, I was able to visit with a Native American shaman. And I remember the first time I went into his, uh, his place, there was uh, Native American artifacts everywhere. And as he began to teach, and he taught in small groups, he would pick up some of those things and he would show us, and he would teach us what the significance of those things was. For example, he taught us about the significance of the bird. He told us that the earth represented the temporal, or the human, or the natural, and the sky represented the eternal, or the creator. And the bird, unlike any other animal, flies between the earth and the sky. So it is upon the bird that our prayers and our thoughts can be made known to the creator. The eagle among birds is most significant to the Native American, because the eagle flies higher than any other bird. So it is upon eagle's wings that our prayers are taken before the creator. There was a shaman once who captured an eagle and held it captive for its feathers, because the natives believed that the feather of the eagle had magical powers. So this shaman would go out and, and clip the feathers as he desired, keeping the eagle tied to a stake in the backyard. One day, the Native American shaman decided that it was wrong to do such a thing, so he went out and he cut the eagle free. After cutting the eagle free, the eagle took off immediately and began to soar to great heights. But it only got so far, and it began to circle. And as it circled, it became lower and lower, until finally it touched the earth where it had once been held captive. It began to walk around that stake one more time. This time, however, it was not tied to the stake. And the shaman thought how sad being an eagle with such great potential and not realizing what freedom it had. The Native American shaman taught us one other thing. He told us a story of a time before Jamestown and Queen Mary, when trees rose several stories high, and their branches stretched so far that a squirrel could travel for days and never touch the earth. It was the story of the people native to this land and of those who came from abroad, some seeking freedom, others seeking only gold and wealth. Those seeking gold took from the land everything that the land had to give, but they did not give it back. Still, the land lived and tried to heal, but in its healing, grieved. Then they took from the people native to this land everything that the people had to give. Still, the people lived and tried to heal, but in their healing, grieved. Then with a feverish lust, those who sought only personal gain made their way to the plains where herds of great buffalo covered miles of fertile grazing land. They took from the buffalo only her skin, leaving meat and bone to rot on the open prairie. Still, the buffalo lived and tried to heal, but in its healing, breathed. The circle is still strong, the shaman said, and the land lives to ever give freedom to all who seek it. But its future depends not so much on nations as individuals, not so much on corporate regulation as personal conscience. Love the land was his message to us that day, and I thought hearing it might inspire you as it had me.